everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you tuning in. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be continuing on with um, National Surgery Month, which is the month of April. Um, I'm so excited about it. I had no idea <laughs> that it was a National Surgery Month, and I thought it was a great time to talk a little bit more about my husband on a Viking, Husky Luck S25. So this is actually the third video that I am doing um, for my surgery. If you missed the two previous videos, you can definitely check them out right here. This first video that I'm going to put up for you is the overview, the one where I talked about the features. Um, some of the favorite things that I love about it. You can check that video out here. The second video that I did for um, my Husky Lock S25 was showing you how to thread it. So you can check that video out here. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to convert it over from a serger to a cover stitch machine. Now I know that can sound a little intimidating <laughs> and sometimes once you have your machine set, you're like, I'm not messing with this, this is how it's going to be. But um, Husqvarna Viking did an amazing job with making it so easy to convert it back and forth. So I'm so happy about that and I'm going to be showing you how to do it in this video. So let's get started. So I am picking up right where I left off from my previous video with threading the machine and getting it ready for surging. So right now the machine is still set for surging. So now I'm going to go through the steps to convert it over to a chain stitch cover stitch machine. And the first thing that I am going to do is go ahead and cut my threads from the top up here and go ahead and put them in the correct position. And I'm going to be threading the machine for the wide cover stitch, which is stitch 23 that is programmed in the machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the right needle, which is red, so we don't need that one. And I'm also going to take this blue and move it over to the purple. So these are the only three spools that we need for the wide cover stitch. I have my yellow here, which is the left needle. I have my green, which is the upper looper, but when you are using it for the wide cover stitch, it becomes the right needle. And then I have the chain stitch cover stitch one over here on the end for purple. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the threads and pull them through the thread stand at the top as well as the thread guide that's at the top of the machine. Before I thread them up through the thread stand as well as the top thread guys, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the previous stitch. So I'm just going to roll my hand wheel a little bit and then the thread just all comes out. So now I can go ahead and thread up here at the thread stand and at the top of the machine. So I'm just going to take the thread, I'm going to start up here and put it through the thread stand and take it through the top thread guide at the top and I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm just going to let that hang because I like to start with the cover stitch one which is purple since that's the one that goes down here at the bottom of the machine. I like to start with that one and then I do the needles last. But I'm just going to go ahead and bring all the threads through at the top. So again, here's my thread. I'm just taking it up here through the thread stand. Then I'm putting it right through the top up here at the thread guide. And I'm just letting it hang for right now. So I have all of the threads threaded. Again, I have yellow, I have green, and I have purple. And this is for the wide cover stitch, and that is stitch 23 on this machine. So first, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my stitch to stitch 23 for the wide cover stitch. And when I do that, I'm going to get a prompt that's going to tell me everything that I need to have on the machine set up for that stitch. If you missed when I talked about those prompts, definitely check out the overview video for this serger series. So I'm going to go ahead and go to stitch 23. So here we are, 23 cover stitch wide, and here is the prompt right here. So I need the cover stitch cover, I need to turn down my blade, I need to disengage the upper looper, I need to move the stitch lever to the rolled hem, make sure that my presser foot pressure is at neutral, and also I need to push back the lever that will disengage the upper looper. So these right here are some of the steps that I need to do right now so I can get the machine in cover stitch mode. So before I start messing with the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and go through this little checklist off this prompt. So the first thing on the prompt is to put on the cover stitch cover. So this right here is the surging cover. It even has a little S right here for surging. I need to put this cover on, which is the cover stitch cover, and it has a little C right here on the side of it. So to do that, it's super, super easy. And there's like a little lift right here. I'm just going to lift up on it, and it just pops right off. 
So this cover I need for serging, not for cover stitching. So I'm going to put this to the side. It has two little openings at the bottom. So I'm just going to slide these right into that and snap it on. And then you're all set. The next thing on the prompt was to turn down our blade, our cutting blade. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here is my blade right here. You can see it. This is what we use when we are serging our fabric, but I need to turn it down now. So I'm just going to pop this out and just turn it. So now the blade was down and you saw how easy that was just to pop it out. When I'm ready for serging, I can just turn it back up for cover stitching, just rotate it down. Next, I am going to disengage the upper looper as well as flip this lever back. When I flip this back, it will disengage the looper. So let me show you that. This lever right here, you can see that it is showing an S, which is for surging. So when I rotate my handle, you can see this upper looper is still moving here. So to disengage that, I need to line up this S right here with this opening and flip it so that the C will be showing. So I'm just going to turn my hand wheel so that it's right there. So now I'm going to flip this to the back. And you will know if you have your wheel up far enough because it would just slide back. But right now I don't. So I'm going to move my hand wheel a little bit more. A little bit more. One more time. And now you can see there's a C showing. So I've just disengaged. I'm moving my hand wheel, but the upper looper is not moving because I have it flipped back now. So we have changed out the cover. We've disengaged the blade as well as our upper looper. We flip back this handle. Now we can go ahead and move the stitch lever down to the road hem. Um, my presser foot is always set at neutral, so I haven't moved that. So once I change this down to the row hem, I can go ahead and push OK and I can start threading. So this right here is a stitch lever and I just need to slide this down to the road hem. If I don't slide this down, the cover will not be able to close. So let me show you that. So the cover will not close if you don't have the stitch lever down to the road hem. So I'm just going to slide that down so I can show you. So you can see once you move the stitch lever down to R, the cover is then able to close with no problem. But we're not quite done back here just yet. I need to thread for my cover stitch. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so to begin threading, I have my tweezers right here. They come with the machine. I'm going to go ahead and grab my thread here, untangle the green and purple. First thing, I'm just going to wrap it around this little hook. And I'm going to go straight to the first purple, which is right here. It's connected to a blue. Um, last video, we threaded for the blue for the four thread overlock. But today, we're going to go right here with the purple hole. I'm just going to put the thread through there. So now that's threaded. Now I'm going to come right down here to the second purple and thread it here. All right, so I have it hooked and I've put it through the first guide right here for purple. I've came down here to the second one and now I'm going to move right here to the third. All right, so I have that hook there. Next we have this little loop right here right here on the machine we need to thread the thread through there so i'm just going to take the end of it pull it through so now that it is through this little thread guide down here i need to take it all the way back here to this purple this is the next step so i'm going to grab the thread and put it all the way back here you can see that little loop right there in front of that thread that's where i'm taking it through I'm just going to pull the thread out so you can see it's coming out of that loop there. The next step is very similar to how we would thread for the serger by placing this thread in the little groove of the lever. So I'm going to show you the lever right here, this part that's moving. You can see that there is a little groove right in between it. That's where the thread needs to sit. So I'm just going to let my thread drop a little. So it can fall into there and push it back and now the thread is caught in the back. So from here I'm just going to take my thread and go ahead and thread for this cover stitch needle here. 
make sure it's not wrapped around anything. And for the cover stitch, we just leave this thread down here. We don't bring it out to the top like we would while we're serging. We keep it down here at the bottom. And I only have about a three, four inch thread tail just hanging in here. So once you have all that threaded for all of the purple, chain stitch, cover stitch, threading, we're all done. We can go ahead and close up the machine. And now we can start working with the needles. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push OK right here on my touch screen because we've done all of those steps. But before we can start sewing, we need to move our needles around. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the position that it has for the cover stitch wide needles. So for the cover stitch wide, I need for my needles to be in slot C and slot E. Right now they are in the back for A and B because I was surging, but now I need to move them up to the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this little case that comes with the machine. It has tools in here. And I'm gonna grab this alley key out of it because I need this to loosen up the needles. And I'm also gonna grab the needle threader because there is a little hole on this side of it that I can put the needles in so when I'm changing them out, they won't accidentally fall in between the machine and I lose it and panic. <laughs> I can just put the needles through here as I'm changing it so I won't have to worry about them falling through. So I'm gonna again grab the alley key and the needle threader. Okay, so I have the needle threader holding the needle for me so when I loosen it, again, it won't drop down to the machine. So I'm just gonna take the alley key now. I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen up needle B. I'm sorry for being so handsy. I'm trying to record and do it so you can, saw, you can see there the needle just kind of slipped down but I had it in this needle threader so it didn't slip down too far. So I'm just going to push this one up into slot E. I need to open it up. Make sure the flat side of it is going up. Need to open it some more. So now I need to move this one in the back. So I'm just going to untwist A and it just falls out and I can catch it with the needle threader here. And this one is gonna go into C. Open this one up so it can slide up. All right, so I have moved the needles up. Forgive me for my hands. I was trying to do it and show you um, but I, I hope you were able to see. I moved them from back here in slot A and B to the front in C and D. And you can see that E is a lot longer down than C is. That's the way it's supposed to be. So we're good to go. So green, which is the upper looper, that will now become the right needle right here for green. In yellow, the left needle will be over here for C. So now we can just thread those the same way we always thread for the needles. Okay, so here is my green thread right here. Again, whenever you're threading, make sure that you have your presser foot raised up because it opens up the tension disc for your thread to go through. So I'm just gonna make sure I have it in there and I'm gonna come across right here, all the way over toward the left. And the right needle is gonna go in the far back slot. I'm gonna take it all the way around here but it's gonna come in the first slot over here. And then under here, it's also gonna go in the first slot. Behind the thread guide, and now I'm just going to thread it. And pull it through all the way to the back. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for yellow, which is the left needle. Just gonna bring it down now for the left, it's gonna go in this first slot right here, all the way around that. But then it's gonna go in the last slot for this guide and this thread guide. It's gonna slide in the last ones. Now behind this guide there, and now I can go ahead and thread for the left needle. and pull that one through. So now we have our needles threaded and again, we have the cover stitch one threaded down here below. So now let me go ahead and grab some test fabric and see how I did. So to test my stitch, I'm gonna be using this gray scrap piece of fabric here. This is a double knit fabric. It has some good recovery, nice little stretch here, nice um, weight fabric, mid weight fabric. So I'm just gonna fold under one end of it to kind of mimic a hem 
like so. And I'm gonna place this part of the fabric down on the machine so that the right side of the fabric will get the two needle stitches. So I'm just gonna raise up my presser foot a little bit more to slide the fabric under. I'm gonna drop down the presser foot and I'm just gonna start stitching all the way across. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can tie off your thread. One thing that you can't do is keep sewing to create a chain like we would while we are serging. So I'm going to stop midway and then show you how I like to tie off my threads. If you are gonna be sewing all the way off the fabric, all the way to the end, then you can just tie off the needles toward the back and connect them to the looper to tie that off as well to create a knot so that your thread won't unravel. But I'm gonna be stopping kind of midway to show you how I like to just lock my stitch. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start sewing. <laughs> Okay, so before I get to the end, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my wheel in one full rotation all the way away from me. So I have one full rotation there. I'm going to raise up my cursor foot. I'm going to grab something sharp. Right now I have my scissors. <laughs> I'm just going to slide that under the presser foot here. Bring the two threads toward me. I'm going to clip those off. And now I'm going to pull the thread straight behind the machine and clip that off as well. So here's the front of the fabric and here is the wrong side of it. Now, don't judge me because I am not <laughs> straight at all, um, but we can always just trim that off. We trim these threads. I'm gonna trim this down as well. So that's better. <laughs> there you have your nice clean hem on your knit garment. So that is the wrong side of the fabric and this would be the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more stitch. I'm gonna raise up the presser foot a little bit, drop it down and just stitch right across. I'm gonna raise the presser foot slide something sharp under there to bring the threads towards me and I lost one there. I'm gonna go ahead and clip it though. Pull the thread out the back and clip that thread. So here's the front side of it and here's the back. So that is what the stitch looks like. Again, this is a wide cover stitch and you can always adjust the tension to suit the fabric that you're working with. So um, don't judge me too harshly <laughs> if these are a little loose. Um, I just want to show you all what the stitch looks like. So that is all. I hope that you all enjoyed seeing how you can convert the Husqvarna Viking Husky Lock S25 from a serger to a cover stitch chain stitch machine. If you have any questions, please leave them down for me below. I'll be more than happy to answer. And be sure to check out the other two videos in this series on the Husqvarna Viking Husky Lock S25. Blessings everyone. Bye.